please give it up for our next guest, Nate Bowling. Welcome, sir. It's nice to be here. Ikea chair. Oh, yes. Yeah, nothing but uh, generic from PLU for you. <laughs> All right. It's rippling, it's rippling. So you are the Washington State Teacher of the Year for, la for 2016, correct? Yeah, that is correct. And, oh! yeah. Yeah. and, and he was in the top four in the, in the national competition. You finished in the top four, that's correct? That's too? also correct, yeah. Well, Man. So, clearly, you are an educator of a high caliber, clearly. Would you have any advice for students who are studying education here? How can they be successful in teaching the young people of our country? Sure. Uh, for me, the thing is about, like, teaching is relational, and people understand that. Like, it doesn't matter what you know. Nobody cares what you know. They care you can you connect. And so, like, mm -hmm. kids buy into the teacher way before the content. And so there's this whole thing, like people in Atlantic Magazine saying, we need PhDs in classrooms. Like it's not about content knowledge, it's about relationships. If you can establish a rapport with somebody, you can teach them. Wow, wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much. They're, they're really clappy, by the way. It's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of hilarious. They're really clappy. Oh, it's amazing for us, right? Clapping, clapping, yes. It's, you know, it, it feels good when you're up here, right? Yeah, when you're sit. Uh, so you got the, the teach government at Lincoln High School in Tacoma. That's correct, right? Yeah. And you're teaching government. And has the way you teach, you've taught government changed at all uh, with the election of a new president? Do you change how you approach? Let's subjects? be real. Uh, it's easier now than ever. Uh, <laughs> I can start class with, like, the tweet of the moment. And as long as like it's clean enough to use, because sometimes it's not. Um, Which so the tweets from the president of the United States are not clean enough to show in your classroom. On occasion. And so, wow. it, like honestly, the class nowadays is they walk in the classroom. There's a headline, a graph, or something. Provocative quote. I ask a question. Provocative quote. Question. Discourse. 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 Right. 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 And it, it teaches itself, honestly. Like, like <laughs> right now in this moment, young people are so engaged and so outraged, and like rightfully so. There's so much, we'll call it chicanery and shenanigans happening. Uh, that, that I, I'm actually amazingly like, like blessed to have this job and excited for the future. Uh, this is not pandering to the audience, but like, I cannot wait until the boomers are gone. <laughs> like, what, what, wait, amendment. I can't wait till the boomers are gone except my mother. Like, oh, oh, she can course. stick around. And mine too, well, right? And my in-laws, yeah. sorry. Oh, yeah. But like, the rest of them, like, like, there's a generational shift that needs to happen. Like, I, mm -hmm. I, I think about, I think the year's 1947. So like the summer of 1947, Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, and George W. Bush were all born. Like there's a generational shift in American politics where a certain class and generation has had the, the gears for 30 years and we've seen what they've done. It's time for something new. Awesome. And it, that we get to decide that, right? We get to go and we get to vote and decide who gets to be the next president. But this is my drum I'm going to be. This is one of the biggest frustrations, that voter turnout, 18 to 35-year-olds, is awful. Who, who voted this year? Who voted? Let's hear it. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. But they made more noise for a Nickelback joke than about voting. Oh. They did. That's very true. And so what, what advice do you have to people like, to get them to go vote? How do you convince your friends to well, go vote? Particularly if you're in Washington State, like, for, for Christ's sake, you can register on Facebook and we vote by mail. There's no excuse. Like, just effing vote. And like, if you don't know how to vote, like, jump on my Instagram. I always post my voter's guide. Like, it's, it's, it's not that complicated. Like, sit down, spend some time with the progressive voter's guide or the conservation voter's guide or whatever your ideology voter guide is and like, make an informed vote. And PLU has, uh, PLU rocks the vote. We have an entire organization for it. So take advantage of those things while you're here. Yeah. We uh, shouldn't have to organize to get people to vote by mail. Like, it's by mail, for God's sakes. Yeah, yeah. yes. Uh, one person really agreed with you, yeah. like, clapping yeah, again. This is not yeah. a black neighborhood in Alabama with a long line. Like, it's vote by mail. We can do this. Yeah, yes, we can, right? So I have a couple photos of you. Sure. And I would just like a little bit of an explanation yeah. for these photos. Am uh, I, I'm wearing pants and all these, I assume, correct? Yeah. <laughs> We'll find out. Yeah. Colin, will you pull the first uh, photo up for us? Is it me and my mom? Yeah, it's him and his mom, <laughs> yeah. So that is you and Barack Obama. What, how did you get to meet Barack Obama? So, okay. Each, <laughs> each year, the Teachers of the Year are invited to the White House. 
but because of things that happen, sometimes the president isn't there. Uh, I got to go in President Obama's last year and meet with him and talk to him and have a very brief conversation where I was like, don't embarrass yourself, don't embarrass yourself, don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> and I just, I said to him really briefly, like, you know, as somebody who's a student of American history and understands context and like what your presidency means, just thank you for being who you were and what you represented. Wow. Did he, did he say anything back? Did he, what was, what did he say? I, I also made a pitch, so that same. <laughs> double, double it down, right. double it down. Get so that, that same year, President uh, Xi from China had come to Lincoln High School, and so I'd met him as well, and we co-taught a lesson. And so I said to President Obama, when you're done in the White House, I'd love to have you come visit you know, Lincoln High School, since President Xi did. And he gave me like the, <laughs> get out of here laugh. It was fine, whatever. <laughs> yeah, as Ob only Obama can. With yeah. The, yeah. So we have another picture. Uh, Colin, if you pull that one up for us. That is you, there it is. That is you and Bill Gates. So for the record, Bill Gates is way less popular than Barack Obama in this room. Just yeah, yeah, well, you can tell that as yeah. much. They're missing him, that's what it is. We still have Bill Gates where he's supposed to be. But, um, yeah, supposed to be, uh, what, it, what we'll talk about in the government class maybe. Is that, You're fine. Uh, so um, Bill Gates commended you for use of Star Wars to talk about civil rights. Is that, that correct? Is that why you were in that Yeah, well, well, so him and I were having a conversation in general, mm -hmm. and it was scheduled in advance, and what was really funny was it happened the day after the Brexit vote. And so we're supposed to talk education, but instead the whole time we're talking geopolitics. He's like, yeah, I'm going to visit Francois Hollande next. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm not Francois Hollande. Let's talk. Uh, but yeah, I have a method in my classroom where I talk about civil rights, where I basically use Supreme Court cases as markers and throw down, like, so the Civil War and the end of the Confederacy is Star Wars. The good, wise, good guys win, and everybody celebrates. Then the uh, case of Pleasant versus Ferguson is the Empire Strikes Back, and we get uh, Serve but Equal, we get Segregation, we get Jim Crow, and then we have Brown versus Board, which is Return of the Jedi, good guys win. But the thing is, that simple analogy like, gets, gets to like, the story and the narrative, but it's more complicated than that, and like, much like with Star Wars, like, the fight continues. Hmm. That's super cool. <laughs> really cool. So, I'm an avid Star Wars fan, yep. and... Uh, have, do you have your tickets for the new one already? I don't yet. I'm, I'm going home. So we have Fair a small enough. local theater, easy to get tickets. But uh, I need to know who's your favorite Jedi. Or who's your favorite Star Wars character, if that's fair. And it better not be Jar Jar Binks. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, but it, it's pandering to say that, like, okay, here. My favorite is the one that should have happened. Uh, Tupac was originally supposed to play Mace Windu. I didn't know that. Yeah, that yeah. was the original, like, 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 plan. But then, like, you know, dead homies Tupac, pour some out. Uh, and you got Sam Jackson instead. <laughs> And so, you, what, did you, what, did you, what did you just do right there? We do that again? What was? Pour some out for the dead homies. Yeah. Oh, I've never heard of that. Yeah. I'm from. I'm, I'm an educator, man. I'm just teaching lessons here. Yeah, I'm from. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, uh, there, you have a podcast then called Nerd Farmer. Yeah. Uh, why, why is it called Nerd Farmer? What does that mean? What is it about? So I grew up in Tacoma, Washington in the, in the 1980s, and so that's before all like the redevelopment and reinvestment came in. Like Tacoma was kind of hood. And like being a thoughtful, studious black person was always the greatest thing. And so for me, like my job in teaching, I've intentionally chosen to live in the neighborhood that I teach in with my wife. We live and teach in the same building. I'm 306, she's 206. Oh. You are <laughs> That keeps happening. Uh, You're just pulling on every string right? they've got. Everyone and so the, the idea of nerd farming is, is that like, I live in this community, and one of the worst things we say to kids is like, go to school, get educated, so you can leave the neighborhood. No, go to school, get educated, and stay. Be social workers, be pharmacists, be small business owners, be entrepreneurs, be police officers. And I like that last guy, geez. Like, <laughs> and so the idea of nerd farming is, I, I want to intentionally grow and develop a better community inside of Tacoma. Because the thing is, is like, I under, we all understand like, the way things work. If Tacoma is going to become a transformed, world-class city and be like that strong, like, solid, middle-class city uh, of, of the similar size, like Providence, Rhode Island, whatever, uh, it's going to be because we educate the east side of Tacoma. And so my principal, my boss, who I love working for, says that the, the hands, no, sorry, the fate of the future of Tacoma is in the staff, in the, I can't say anything. The oh, fate good, of yeah. the future of Tacoma is in the hands of the staff of Lincoln High School. And I believe it's my core, and so the work that I do in teaching is nerd farming. Hmm. Wow, that's super cool. That's incredible. So, 
So we literally wrote down on our questions just, you are awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we really think that, and uh, could you just tell us a little bit about the meeting with the president of China, what that was like? Sure. So in 2015, like in September, uh, it was announced that the president was making a state visit to, to China. Uh, my wife and I that summer had actually been in China teaching. And so like when I arrived at my principal's office, he's like, there's this thing that could happen, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> and then over the next couple of weeks, it went from there's no way it happens to like, holy S, this is happening. And so uh, the president of China, Xi Jinping, came to Tacoma, High School, Tacoma visited Lincoln High School. Uh, he got to come into my classroom uh, while I was working with students. I co-taught a brief lesson about <laughs> executive power with him. Uh, <laughs> and the irony of that, I'll let you kind of wander through yourself. <laughs> Uh, and then they had a huge assembly where basically he announced that 100 students from Lincoln High School would get flown to China. And so the next year, 100 students went on the Chinese dime to China. Uh, my wife went on the trip. They visited like six different cities over like 13 days. Oh my God. And like, in the big scheme of things, okay, before the last election, I would say that the American president's the most powerful person in the, in the world. Uh, frankly, the current president is doing a very good job of abdicating the responsibility of the presidency and like making it less important. And so to think about the fact that like China's a rising economic power, uh, the president of China has another five year term coming up. And like if you're looking at Chinese politics and the five years after that possibly, uh, Xi Jinping's an amazing, amazing like person to know and like to have in a classroom. And what was really cool about it was the kids were like, oh, can we shake his hand? I'm like, no way you're going to shake his hand. Uh, and when he finished, he reached his hand out and this girl just goes, ah! Like a beetle. <laughs> and like, but that's awesome for me because that means she got the magnitude of that moment. Like she got it. And it, it, was, it was, the funny part of the thing was Chinese Secret Service and American Secret Service are there, but they don't cooperate with each other. So, because they want redundancy, right? And so there's Chinese dudes talking in their wrist and there's American guys talking in their wrist. And the whole time I'm like, can I just get those cufflinks? <laughs> but it didn't work out. But no, it was an amazing experience to host head of state in our school. So it's, they do the cufflinks, not the headset. Cufflinks. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah. This is movie stuff. This is real life. Oh, now we know the difference. Yeah. Now we know. So you've kind of censored yourself a couple of times since you've been here, which we appreciate for our live viewers' sake. You know, we've got people all ages. What do you do with your classroom? How do you, you talk about being relational with your students. What is the language that you use? So I'm very outspoken politically in, in my life and in my social media activism. Uh, but actually in my classroom, I'm much more moderate. I kind of have an act that I do. Um, mm -hmm. I think my students are convinced that I'm a frustrated Nixon Republican. <laughs> <laughs> and so like every, so like, literally every unit, I'll just jump back and forth. I'm like, well, here's the liberal point of view on campaign finance. And here's the conservative point of view on states' rights and federalism. And like by the end of it, like at graduation, they're like, what are you really? And I'm like, who cares what I am? Yeah. And that's great. The unbiased teaching, they get to, they get to decide, right? They get well, to pick. Yeah, I, I'm not going to preach to them like who to vote for or whatever. That's their own politics, their own business. But like, I am passionate about issues. And so like, the one place where I'll take stands are when my students' humanity is at risk, right? And so I will take a stand about like, trans bathroom issues. I will take a stand about deportations. I will take a stand about like, these things because like, there's politics and there's justice, right? Like, I don't preach like weak liberal politics because I think weak liberal politics are offensive. I preach justice. Hmm. Wow. That is super cool. Yeah. And I think they all think so too. Um, so I have one final question for you. Right. So you have met a president, two presidents. You have met the richest man in our country, one of them. Joe Biden too. So like two and a half presidents. You met Joe Biden? By the way, Uncle Joe is the dude. Oh man. <laughs> Like, Uncle Joe will hit on your wife in front of you, and you're like, wait a second. <laughs> but it's Joe Biden. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm picturing Leslie and Parks and Rec in my head right now. Yeah. Joe's, sorry, you, you were saying, you were saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the question. Yeah, Joe Biden, not the yeah, question. Uh, so uh, why, why you've done all these amazing things. You have a successful podcast. Why teach high schoolers? And you kind of hinted at this a little bit. But uh, I was a high schooler once, and I wouldn't want to hang out with myself in high school. That's for sure. And there's days I don't. So, yeah. Let's be real. There's days where I'm like, my God, I need a nap right now. <laughs> so why, why stick with it? Why stay doing, why stay teaching? Because I get to have a foundational role in students' understanding of justice and democracy. Wow. That's super cool. Thank you. Super cool. So 
you've met you've met these people in office and you've had these cool things. Would you ever consider running for an office at some point down the line? Hell no. Oh! Like if, if if I can keep it 100, uh, if we look at what's happening right now in like local elections, particularly here in the city of Tacoma, like the amount of like mudslinging and obfuscation and just like nonsense that happens, like I. First of all, my wife wouldn't let me. Second of all, I don't want to doorbell and fundraise. And third of all, I, I enjoy what I do too much. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Give it up for Nate Bowling. What a great interview.